We're going to look at what the energy balance is for a single effect evaporator. And so the idea is that we're feeding a liquid and the, the mass flow rate of that liquid is called m dot feed. This liquid has a dissolved solute and what we want to obtain is a concentrated liquid. So increase the concentration and so this mass flow rate of liquid leaving would be a higher concentration of solute and we're going to do that by evaporating some of the liquid and let's let's call it water to make it easier to discuss so there's going to be some mass flow rate of water vapor leaving the system and the way we're going to do that is by feeding in steam at saturation conditions and the the mass flow rate then of the steam is that well, the steam's leaving, it's not mixing with the liquid, it's a heat exchanger. And so the steam's going to leave as a condensed steam, rather, is leaving. So this is liquid at saturation conditions that's leaving. And the energy from condensing, the steam evaporates. So let's look at some additional labels. The steam temperature, called TS, and it's going to be the same temperature because we're assuming we're a saturated liquid exiting saturated vapor entering. The temperature of evaporator we'll call T1. Well that's the same temperature as here and the same temperature as here. We're assuming it's well mixed. And the temperature of the liquid coming in will temperature feed. And the mass fraction of the solute going to be XF and then leaving will be a higher mass fraction we'll call that XL so the, the one mass balance we're going to need for this energy balance is that the mass flow rate of the liquid coming in mass flow rate of vapor leaving plus mass flow rate of the concentrated liquid leaving and then we're going to do an energy balance and we're assuming that there's no heat transfer outside the system so it's adiabatic we're assuming it's well mixed so this temperature one is the same as this temperature here liquid leaving and because it's a flow system and adiabatic no work done the enthalpy in equals enthalpy out right so this is a rate of flow of energy in rate of flow of energy out so coming in in two ways the flow rate of the feed times its enthalpy so this is at the temperature of the feed plus the mass flow rate of the steam times its enthalpy where this is a vapor and then leaving we have mass flow rate of vapor enthalpy of the vapor and we have mass flow rate of steam and the enthalpy now the enthalpy of the condensate so it's the same mass flow rate but it's liquid leaving and then we have the mass flow rate of the concentrated liquid and its enthalpy so we're going to rearrange this and we're also going to make this substitution so let, let me pause and rearrange it so notice i've rearranged and i made the substitution over here for the feed mass flow rate well this left side then is the heat of vaporization that means liquid here going to vapor you know because we arranged it it's actually condensing but heats of vaporization is what we look up in the steam table so we rearranged it to make that come out correct and then i can group the terms together now because I'm considering this aqueous solution. We can look up these values in the steam tables. Heat of vaporization at temperature TS. These values for the vapor and the feed are at different temperatures. And likewise, the liquid and the feed are different temperatures. But again, we can look them up in the steam tables. We're assuming that the concentration of the solute is low. So we're looking at, we'll do an example problem. We'll look at five percent solute going to ten percent that's by weight so by mole percent it's significantly lower maybe one percent and so the heats of the enthalpies are really going to be pretty close to those for water the boiling temperature doesn't change that much for that one percent and the heat capacity is going to be pretty close for the liquid to just pure water the only other equation in terms of energy balance is is that the rate of heat transfer between the steam and the liquid, flow rate of steam, heat of vaporization of the steam, that's going to be equal to a heat transfer, an overall heat transfer coefficient, an area for heat transfer, and then the temperature to steam minus the temperature to evaporator. And so the mass flow rate that we have for steam is going to be dependent on 
how much heat we can transfer if we want to have saturated steam come and saturated liquid leave.